Hi everyone, this video is going to be about sleep hygiene. I bring this up because so many of my clients talk about having difficulties sleeping, having difficulties falling asleep, having difficulties staying asleep, the struggles of what life is like when you're not sleeping. I imagine that all parents out there are experiencing a similar thing. I can tell you, last night I woke up, I think it was three times, it's always a blur because you never know where you're at, uh, but I woke up several times and it's going to affect me today. And so if I'm not sleeping well and I'm being interrupted a few times, life's going to get a bit hairy quite quickly. So what I've got is a sleep hygiene uh, handout, a resource that you can go out and take, adapt, change, make, make your own to go out and uh, work for yourself or to work with your clients if you're a clinician. So... In here, we've got morning plan, day plan, evening plan, bedroom plan, and if you can't fall asleep, what you can go out and do. I'm not going to go through all of it because there's a specific part I think is the most valuable, which I'm going to talk about is what do you do if you can't fall asleep and look at the general sleep hygiene space in there. So first of all, let's look at what sleep hygiene is and how we want to set up your environment. What we want to do, like anything, if you want to go out and grow some nice plants or some nice flowers, you've got to make the environment really, really enriching to go out and do that. So in a garden scenario, you might go out and look at the soil. How can we make the soil the best it can be? You see, we've got to nurture it. And what, what we do to nurture our space for sleeping is we want a dark room. Very helpful because that's what nature would go out and do it for, do for us in, 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 in you know, normal life, so, so to speak, because these days we've got you know, gadgets, we've got lights, so we want to make sure it's a dark room. Quiet. It's not easy to go out and be in a space where it's always loud, it's always, uh, um, uh, you know, things are moving, creaking, people walking around, so on and so forth. So where you can, let's try and make it, make it quiet. Uh, let's have a, a room that's fairly reasonably cool, you know, it doesn't need to be freezing cold, but cool enough so that when you do cover yourself, you feel comfortable. Um, now, if you're in an environment that is way, way too hot, you're up in you know, northern Australia or you know, around the equator and it's just absolutely screaming hot, um, I can't do anything for you there. You've got to try and, try and make yourself as most, the most comfortable as, as you can. So we want an environment that kind of looks like that with no distractions. Take away the things out of your bedroom um, because your bedroom really needs to be for two things sleeping, the rest, and maybe you know sex, having intimacy with your partner. Apart from that, we shouldn't be going out and using it for any other reason so that we don't build some negative um, associations there. Now, if you sleep well and everything's fine, do whatever the hell you want in your bed. It doesn't make a difference. So don't take everything you know uh, verbatim. Think about how this works for you. If we've got the context now really, really comfortable and how you like it to, 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 to be, you know, and play with those, uh, with, with those parts, if you can't fall asleep for, let's say, about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, so you've gone to bed, you're a bit restless, you can't get to sleep, my suggestion would be get out of bed. Why? By trying to go out and go to sleep, be asleep, we tend to go out and become more irritable, frustrated, and the things that we try and do tend to oppose us. And so the more we're kind of restless, the more restless we become, the more agitated, the more frustrated we become. So I would say if you can't get to sleep for, say, 20 to 30 minutes, get out of bed. But how will you know if it's 20 to 30 minutes? Not by looking at your clock. Why? We well, want to get rid of the clock. And, and the reason there is I don't want you clock watching because when you're clock watching, you're going out and thinking uh, the whole time and kind of calculating how much time you've had, how much time you've got left to fall asleep, how much time will you need to be, uh, do you have left until you need to be asleep, otherwise the next day is going to be a write-off. We don't want to go out and cal calculate that. So if I say to you, don't finish this equation, Five plus five equals. You can't stop the mind from going out and calculating that. And I know that when you've woken up in the middle of the night and there, you look at the clock and it says it's 
4 a.m., immediately the mind goes out and says, ah, oh, two more hours of sleep, or ah, oh, three more hours of sleep. You've calculated, and sometimes that can be agitating and it makes it harder to fall asleep. So when I say 20 to 30 minutes, if you can't get to sleep, get out of bed, what I'm saying is roughly, you know, just kind of gauge it. You know, we all have a sense of, of how long it's been roughly. So let's say you get out of bed. What do you do when you get out of bed? There's a lot of data out there that goes out and says, don't, don't go out and have caffeine, stimulants, those sorts of things. Don't, you know, use a screen. Look, some of that I, 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 I think is quite reasonable. Other stuff I, I think is absolute crap. I don't buy into it. I don't know if, if a screen is going to go out and, and all of a sudden not be able to let you fall asleep. For some, it might. And if it does for you, don't look at screens. But most of us are fairly reasonable that way because we're in front of screens you know, all the time. But I'll tell you what I'd prefer you to be going out and doing during that time. If you can't sleep uh, and no one can make you sleep, force you to sleep, it's not something we're just going to say, okay, I'm now going to sleep, hence why we're having this conversation. I would go out and suggest go out and do something that's productive. Now, for me, what that means is I go out and I pick this guy up, right? which means I can be at home um, and still be doing work. And so I get involved in work, partially because I love my work and you know, it's fun and enjoyable in terms of at least getting, getting on top of things because I don't like being behind. But that means I can go out and do a whole heap of work. And if I'm up for an hour because I can't fall asleep for an hour, you know, I'm just not feeling tired, it means I get an hour of productivity done and I don't need to do that hour the following day while I'm exhausted and tired. Now let's say I don't have that, that uh, uh, sleepy wave sort of come over me for three hours. Well, guess what that means? I'm here on the computer getting three hours of work done. And once again, I feel great that I've gone out and accomplished something, achieved something that I don't have to do the following day while I'm completely exhausted. Now this concept of a sleepy wave is really important. I call it sometimes the sleepy bus or the sleepy train. It's that concept of every once in a while you'll notice that this wave of sleep, a wave of tiredness shows up, right? And so when it shows up, that's the time to catch the bus, right? Catch the sleepy bus. If you miss it, there's a tendency that you won't be able to fall asleep again. So if the wave comes up, the sleepy wave comes up, the sleepy bus comes up, whatever you want to call it, this is what I suggest you do. You grab that computer and you go, and I'll look after that tomorrow. You don't go out and say, oh, I'm just going to go out and finish you know, this email. I'm just going to go out and finish this report, whatever it might be. You go out and you just stop and you go back to bed. So you jump into bed, you close your eyes <clears throat> as you were before, and we'll just see how you go. Hopefully within 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you're asleep. Guess what you do if you can't fall asleep? You get out of bed and you do it all again until the sleepy bus arrives again. Now, what's interesting is if you go out and do something that's productive, sometimes that can actually feel quite painful in that we're avoidant of it. You know, most people don't like doing ironing and those sorts of things. So go out and start ironing, you know, 20 pairs of shirts or whatever it is that, that needs to be done, so long as you're not obviously disturbing the rest of the house. So go out and do the things that you've been avoiding, that you haven't wanted to do. And what can sometimes happen as well is, because we're avoidant of it, the sleepy bus might arrive a little bit earlier because it doesn't want you to do uh, those things that we've been avoiding for a long time because we know that sustained mental effort is something that we hate doing most of the time and so we avoid it and it drives us back to going to sleep. There's this kind of nice little dance that we're doing where go to bed, if you can fall asleep, great, we're not going to force it. If you can't go to bed, you're not getting to sleep, then that's okay as well. Let's at least be productive. The last thing I want you to do is be in bed rolling, tossing, turning, getting frustrated for four hours and you get nothing done, you're exhausted the next day, you're frustrated the next day, you've done nothing that's going to go out and help in life. Uh, and then what, we just rinse and repeat? Not very good, you're going to be miserable and you're going to be miserable to everyone around you. So what I would go out and suggest is that little dance, you get out, do, do, your, um, uh, do, do whatever productive 
And I think you'll have a better day the following day because you've already gone out and done three or four hours of productive work. You've done half a day's worth of work, potentially more because it's uninterrupted. So that's the sleep hygiene uh, sheet. There'll be a link that's attached to this as well so that you can go out and, and download this, use it yourself, amend it. You know, you might not agree with all of this. You know, you're not supposed to have your own critical sort of thinking, but make sure that it, that it, that it has this uh, uh, space of uh, not forcing sleep because you're never going to go out and achieve that, um, but rather working with however your sleep is during that time. Thanks for uh, listening, and if you enjoyed this one, please subscribe. There'll be a link somewhere here as well, um, and make sure you share it.